The F-16 Fighting Falcon is among the most recognizable and widely deployed combat aircraft on Earth. Five decades after its first U.S. Air Force flight, it remains the most common fixed-wing military jet in service, with more than 4,600 airframes built since 1975 and over 2,000 currently operational worldwide. In 2024, Ukraine became the 30th nation to field F-16s, joining a remarkably diverse user community that includes Israel, Pakistan, Denmark, the Netherlands, Thailand, and Venezuela. The aircraft's global appeal continues. The United States most recently approved the sale of 12 F-16CD Block 70 jets to Peru, underscoring the enduring demand for this versatile multi-role platform. Today's F-16s are far removed from their 1970s and 1980s predecessors, having undergone continual rounds of modernization to enhance performance and integrate cutting-edge military technology, upgrades that are still ongoing. Although the F-16S transferred to Ukraine are not the very latest variants, they did receive substantial improvements before delivery, most notably a specialized boost to their electronic warfare, EW capabilities, tailored to Ukraine's unique battlefield against the invading Russian forces. The story behind this upgrade opens a window into contemporary air warfare and how Ukraine is employing its F-16. By mid-2025, NATO members had pledged at least 85 jets for Ukraine. The Netherlands promised 24 and had delivered all of them by May 2025. Of Denmark's 19 pledged jets, at least 12 had arrived by late February 2025. Norway reportedly delivered 14, more than double the six initially publicized, and Belgium promised a further 30, with deliveries delayed but expected to conclude by 2028. Not all of those 85 jets are earmarked for frontline duty. At least 18 of the Dutch aircraft were assigned to training Ukrainian pilots, primarily at the European F-16 training center in Romania, and some may be used as sources for spare parts. The United States, meanwhile, hasn't provided operational F-16 to Ukraine. Its own air force is replacing aging F-16 with F-35 Lightning IIs, a transition initially targeted for completion by late 2025 but slowed by F-35 rollout delays. In response, the U.S. has been extending the F-16 service life with upgrades intended to keep the type viable into the 2040s. That means continued demand for servicing and modernization across the U.S. fleet and the 30 other countries that fly the jet, plus ongoing need for spares, often cannibalized from the U.S. stockpile of older, non-flyable F-16s. In May, photos showed partially disassembled F-16s being loaded onto a Ukrainian-chartered AN-124 in Arizona. Flight tracking later showed the heavy transport heading to Poland. An Air Force spokesperson confirmed that the U.S. has supported sustainment of European donated F-16 by providing disused, fully non-operational aircraft for parts, airframes lacking essential components like engines or radars and impossible to restore to flight. Then in September, the U.S. Department of Defense awarded Lockheed Martin a $25.9 million contract to support Ukrainian F-16s in Fort Worth, Texas through May 2029, funded by the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative. Beyond near-term support, the contract covers manuals, documentation, and technical materials tailored to the Ukrainian Air Force, laying the groundwork for growing maintenance capacity and operational autonomy. Like all modern fighters, F-16s demand extensive maintenance and periodic capability refreshes. The Ukrainian-bound jets, although far from new and often decades in service, received several upgrades before transfer, none more consequential than enhancements to their EW suite. The exact Danish or Norwegian variants sent remain uncertain. Dutch airframes were reportedly F-16AM slash BM, while Belgian jets were F-16AM. All are believed to have undergone the Block 20 Midlife Update, MLU, to roughly the M6.5 baseline, adding precision-guided strike integration and improved cockpit, radar and software. Dutch fighters also carry pods such as Mars and Reculite reconnaissance systems, the Lantern navigation to targeting pod, and more advanced Lightning AT and Sniper pods, equipment that greatly improves situational awareness and mission effectiveness. They were also fitted with the AN-ALR69, a radar warning receiver, to better detect and evade threats. Crucially, according to the U.S. Air Force's elite 68th Electronic Warfare Squadron, EWS, their software was optimized to counter evolving Russian activity across the electromagnetic spectrum. The 68th EWS, established in 1943 and now part of the 351st Spectrum Warfare Wing at Eglin AFB, serves as the U.S. Combat Air Force's sole provider of missionized EW software and supports foreign military sales customers as well. The unit delivers around-the-clock contingency reprogramming of EW systems to boost the lethality and survivability of U.S. forces and allies. Organized into three flights, SWA, 
SWB and SWC, the squadron blends engineering, equipment, test, and software teams that reprogram mission data for F-15S, F-16S, and E-3 aircraft across 28 partner nations while managing testing, IT, development, budgets, and security. Their job is to ingest real-world threat data and generate software that helps pilots defeat those threats, whether that's rendering a Russian Su-35 radar profile correctly on an F-16's display or triggering countermeasure dispensers to launch chaff and flares timed to the kinematics of a particular surface-to-air missile. Historically, the unit has supported more than 70 systems across over 40 countries, yet the Ukrainian F-16 work was unusual. The EW system on these jets was not part of the U.S. inventory forcing the 68th EWS to rapidly learn and reprogram an unfamiliar system under intense time pressure. Rather than decline, the squadron assembled a blended team of veteran specialists and rising engineers, started from Danish and Norwegian data, and even deployed to a partner nation lab to co-develop and test the solution, an atypical approach. The team reportedly cracked the system within two weeks and produced a best-ever mission data file on an ultra-compressed schedule, then onboarded Ukraine as an official foreign military sales case for continuing reprogramming informed by real combat feedback rather than the usual training environment inputs. That combat-derived loop could prove invaluable for Ukraine and for updating F-16 fleets across NATO and other partners, because near-peer wars require coalition forces to share a unified playbook to achieve spectrum dominance. A single reprogrammed jet won't win air superiority, but a pocket of localized dominance at the right moment can achieve strategically significant objectives. What precisely did the 68th EWS change, and how is it helping Ukraine? The details are largely classified. Imagery suggests Danish F-16s were outfitted with thermopylons capable of carrying EW jammers and flare-slash-chaff dispensers integrated with the jet's self-protection suite. Terma also likely supplied the unfamiliar system, the ALQ-213V Electronic Warfare Management Unit EWMU, a compact, highly configurable controller-slash-computing unit used to integrate sensors and effectors with aircraft core functions and ease future upgrades. The ALQ-213 family appears on more than 2,500 aircraft across at least 25 platforms in over 15 countries. It's aboard the U.S. Navy's P-8A Poseidon and Dutch NH-90 helicopters, Taiwan's 144 F-16Vs, and U.S.-supplied upgraded F-16S in South Korea. Most relevant, Denmark integrated ALQ-213V on its F-16S in the 2000s, making it extremely likely this is the unit gifted to Ukraine and reprogrammed by the 68th EWS. While the specific code and algorithms remain secret, EWMU software typically houses a threat library with enemy radar wavelengths, missile flight characteristics and signatures, and, in some cases, techniques that can spoof an adversary's radar display. As the jet sensors detect emissions, the software must identify, classify, and respond to them with precision. Because air defense operators mitigate vulnerability by switching modes, hopping frequencies, and otherwise altering their signatures, EW systems must be reprogrammed regularly to keep pace. In Ukraine's crowded skies, new and modified drones, missiles, and glide bombs frequently appear, each with unique signatures that need to be added to the library. Here, the breadth of U.S. threat libraries, fed by unrivaled surveillance, provides a decisive edge. It is hard to imagine the 68th EWS upgrades did not load the most exhaustive set of Russian signatures available, collected over years of NATO reconnaissance, RQ-4 Global Hawks and MQ-4C Tritons over the Black Sea, RC-135 Rivet Joints, P-8A Poseidons, and more. After the first 30 months of war, that library likely included detailed frequencies and flight profiles for Russia's modern air-to-air -air missiles, air defenses, and combat aircraft, potentially even enabling Ukrainian F-16 to detect the Su-57 or defeat S-400 intercepts more effectively. Of course, the battlefield evolves constantly. Fresh Russian drones, missiles, EW systems, and emissions-altering tactics emerge regularly, demanding continual updates. A real-time, automatic pipeline that records new signatures and instantly pushes them to every relevant jet is the EW Holy Grail. The U.S. is working on such a system, but there's no sign it's fielded yet. For now, Ukraine's most probable method is frequent, manual, on-the-ground updates by 68th EWS technicians, possibly facilitated by two new truck-mounted support complexes introduced in 2025 by the Come Back Alive Foundation with Ukrainian military and energy sector support. These mobile nodes let Ukraine plan missions, brief pilots, rest crews, prep and test weapons, and load munitions from dispersed locations. 
crucial because the locations of Ukraine's F-16 and Mirage 2000 are tightly guarded, their likely bases repeatedly targeted by Russia. Starokostiantini of Ukraine's largest military airfield has been struck at least 13 times by Kinjal and other heavy missiles, pushing Ukraine to keep its fighters in small mobile groups. In that context, regularly updating EWMU threat files from mobile command and armament trucks is entirely plausible. Even so, an impeccable threat library is not a magic wand. Ukraine lacks the numbers to contest Russia for theater-wide air superiority, and growing a large cadre of elite fighter pilots takes years. Still, knowledge that Ukrainian F-16S can identify and counter virtually any Russian emitter adds friction to Russian planning. Can a Su-35's radar reliably detect an upgraded F-16 before being detected itself? What if the EWMU knows a missile radar's frequencies and cues an evasive profile or countermeasures at the perfect instant? The risk calculus shifts. Simply operating near airspace where Ukrainian F-16S might be present becomes more hazardous for Russian air crews, who must fly more cautiously. This, combined with Ukraine's practice of dispersal and movement, likely contributes to the remarkably small number of F-16 losses in 2025, despite frequent Russian claims. The few confirmed losses appear to stem from friendly fire, technical failure, or other emergencies rather than Russian missiles. As more jets arrive and Ukrainian pilots further master the platform, the Air Force's overall effectiveness should rise. If you enjoyed this deep dive, hit like and subscribe for ongoing coverage of military technology and the wider defense landscape.